we've moved into Isaiah. Uh, we've done, we've dealt with Jeremiah. Um, and we are <clears throat> classes away from, uh, sharing in Ezekiel. And I will say that while Ezekiel has way more information, <clears throat> I just want to hit some high points, not a whole lot there, uh, as confirming scriptures more than anything else. <clears throat> and uh, let that come through. Uh, and then we'll move on back eventually to Abraham uh, and his encounter with Adonai that started this whole little search that we got going on here. <clears throat> All right. So I want to reread Isaiah 8, uh, which we've, we've been there. That's the scriptures primarily that we've been focusing on in Isaiah. <clears throat> in Isaiah 8, and uh, starting in verse 7, and um, I just felt like it might be a good thing because uh, I think after this class is when the Revelation class is, so it might be a good thing to contrast some of these early scriptures here that we're going to read with the book of Revelation. <clears throat> Isaiah 8, uh, verse 7 and 8. Um, and it says, Now <clears throat> behold, uh, or now therefore behold the Lord, and the word Lord there, we've, we've gone over this, but I'm just emphasizing is Adonai. And anytime it's Adonai, there is a specific dealing. It's not just God being our comforter or our protector or our helper or that sort of thing. <clears throat> it is God being um, specifically the covering uh, and the keeper of those who are going through the what we call the corridor in relationship to First Peter, they're going through the sufferings of Christ, specifically the sufferings of Christ, not your own sufferings, not because you made a mistake or somebody else made a mistake and then they're blaming you, or that sort of thing per se. <clears throat> but for sure to understand that Adonai's influence is in relationship to that. And I have not found him in relationship to any other thing yet. And I don't know everything. And I don't know all scriptures. So, you know, just search the scriptures, you know. Um, so, now therefore, behold, Adonai bringeth up upon them. And you know that these are the scriptures <clears throat> in Isaiah's time that... Assyria is coming to, and they Assyria eventually will carry all of Israel away, uh, the, the northern kingdom of Israel, as it were, will carry them all away into captivity. And that's where you get the, the phrase, the lost tribes of Israel, because they were scattered among the nations. <clears throat> and uh, so this is uh, some of the precursor to that. Uh, now, therefore, behold, Adonai bringeth up upon them the waters of the river. And he's talking about not a river. He's talking about Assyria, which he'll say that in a second. Uh, strong and many, even the king of Assyria. So it's going to be like a, like a flood coming forth to them and upon them. And all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels, meaning he's going to break forth over the boundaries like a, like a river that's flooding or, or a, well, a river that's flooding is a good example. That goes over the normal boundaries and starts flooding way beyond the boundaries that have been set up uh, up to that point. What boundaries? The boundaries of the different countries the boundaries of the different countries. And he's going to just, just like many, many, many years later, Babylon did the same thing in the same area and defeated Assyria. Um, and going to spread out over and overtake these countries. <clears throat> um, and go over all his banks. And verse 8, And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overthrow and go over. 
I mean, overflow and then just like a flood, what, you know, I mean, it's one thing to overflow the land and everybody's dog paddling. And it's another thing that the, the, he go, the, the flood goes over the top of you and me. <clears throat> Uh, he shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land, O Emmanuel. Okay, and we, we discussed, and I won't go back, but we discussed the reference. Why is it Emmanuel, God with us here? And it is that because... Um, it is that because of the weakness and the sign that was given prior to this. Um, and then I want to compare this now with Revelation 5 <coughs> and 6. And uh, I don't know where you are in the book of Revelation uh, yet. I mean, I know y'all are watching the videos and stuff like that. <coughs> um, but you may be well past five and six, but I just want to, you know, I'm not trying to reteach that. I'm trying to show um, some of the meaning uh, of revelation in relationship to what we're studying here with Adonai, with, um, um, with the sufferings of Christ instead of it just being an evil world messing with you or something like that. All right, so we saw the flood, we saw, and one of the main points to remember in Isaiah before we read in, in Revelation is that it says, Now therefore behold, Adonai bringeth up this overflowing of, of, uh, of bank busting, banks busting, uh, flood of the Assyrian captivity. Adonai is bringing that up. Is making it happen. Okay. Now, uh, even like with Babylon, and the, the, they're, they're very equal, <clears throat> Babylon was Nebuchadnezzar and he did the same thing with a different king at that time, later after Isaiah. And um, while there are always many, and, and, and God is not just one dimensional, there's many reasons for God doing that. But when he brings, when he brings up the name Adonai, then you can know that the reason that he's doing that is not because he's punishing you, even if let's just say the Jehovah part of God, excuse me for, you know, putting it like this, is dealing with sins and dealing with what you did wrong and whatever. Adonai is in his person in the midst of all of that, trying to bring forth the nature of Christ, the Lamb, the Spirit uh, that would not answer back. And, you know, all the things that, that come next in the, uh, Isaiah uh, 8 in verse 9 and 10, the following verses from what I just read, you know, don't, don't assemble together, don't uh, speak up and try to get the help, don't all the things that it says there in Isaiah, um, are, you know, we want to see that here in the book of Revelation. So, Revelation chapter 5, and um, just a, some points here. We'll go down probably to nine. <clears throat> and I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who can read what's been written? Okay. Who can do this? And, um, and this all pertains to decrees of God. And do we understand the decree or do we just read the, the letters and, and the letters forming words and not having it written in our hearts? Um, 
Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Mm -hmm. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Okay, mm -hmm. so just think about this. <clears throat> I want you to think about the book of Revelation. I want you to think about how it opens and how, <clears throat> you know, you do see... Uh, all these people worshiping the slaughtered lamb, and they're all without number, and they're worshiping the slaughtered lamb, <clears throat> and we're not even, you know, we're just a few, few chapters out from that, and you got the issue in heaven about a book, and about everybody wanting that book to be opened and it is as john the revelator said the book of the seven seals some of you blues people know that's an old old blues song <clears throat> um so and no man in heaven nor nor in earth nor under the earth was able to do this in verse four and i wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, don't, don't be crying up here in heaven. <laughs> Trust me, if we're, if we're ignorant of the book, if we're ignorant of what's written uh, in God's heart and what he wants written in our heart, if we're ignorant of that, we will weep while in the earth. This makes it sound like if we're ignorant of that, we'll even be weeping in heaven because we don't understand. What is it? What, what is this? <clears throat> um, one of the other elders saith to me, Weep not. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. The root of David. Hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, or a slaughtered lamb. <clears throat> All right. There's, right, right there in the midst of them. And they're going, where is, where's the answer? What's the answer to this dilemma? I don't know. Does anybody know? <laughs> No, we don't know. <laughs> um, uh, in the midst of the throne, the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. <clears throat> Verse 7, And he came and took the book, the slaughtered lamb. He don't have much strength because he's slaughtered, but he's got enough strength to... Take the book. Come over and get it. Uh, <clears throat> and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to open the book and to open the seals there, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So here we are. <clears throat> we're all we're all rejoicing that he's worthy to open the book, <clears throat> but we don't even know what's in the book. You know, most Christians don't. You know, in the in the sense of. They never connected with it, with the Lamb being the one who can open it. Now, I don't want to reshare the book of Revelation, but we'll, we'll go into that. <clears throat> um, but in heaven, after every nation and, and redeemed and by thy blood and every kindred and every tongue and every people and every nation um, is rejoicing but primarily they don't understand what's coming next. All right. 
So, Revelation 6, verse 1. <clears throat> And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now this is not Jesus here. This is not Jesus. Um... Jesus has a white horse too, but this is not speaking of Jesus. He's not one of six. Um, verse 3, And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and, they, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So the, the, the context of each of these horsemen is going to be problem. They're bringing, they're, the, the seals are opening uh, tremendous uh, um, trials into the earth. Now the lamb is the only one who can open these seals because nobody want, nobody understands what the purpose of the book of Revelation, nobody understands what the purpose of God is in um, uh, Isaiah way, way back then uh, with God loosing Assyria with all of its stuff that's coming, you know, and everything's going to be changed and da 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 and it's all about God with us and it's all about having the spirit in going into all of that and it's all about God forming us into that image and using that and so then nobody really understands Babylon and why is this happening to us and what's going on here and you know and this is horrible and everything instead of the lamb in you opening the seals and allowing you to be with him in his sufferings instead of just massive trials that are going on in the earth. And going, oh God, save me from all of this horrible stuff. It's only getting worse. It's not getting better. Well, you want it to get better? Then... May I suggest start tuning in to his spirit and be with him in that. Okay, so that's, you know who that is? That's Jeremiah talking. You know who that is? That's Isaiah talking. You know who that is? That's pretty much all the prophets. Not Maybe not everyone, but it's pretty much all the prophets speaking in relationship to what God's trying to get out of it instead of God just being on some sort of a power kick that he's just upset with everybody because, you know, they won't do right and all that. Well, I, there, you know, there's that, but Adonai's not doing that. He's not even thinking in that term. His one goal is to focus on trying to... to Fill us with the life of the Lamb to such a degree that we can go through that to the glory of God instead of just being a bunch of wah wah babies that are that are going, well, get in, get me out of this and always save me and you know make my life always happy and, and Christianity is only about when we're happy and it can't be about any purpose you would have eternally. It's about me and you protecting me and you blessing me and you helping me. You 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 taking care of my ministry and you making me famous, you know, and, and giving me lots of money and all this kind and stuff and not letting me get the coronavirus and whoa two different worlds there these people in heaven were weeping because nobody could loose this because they knew they couldn't handle it but they know the lamb can not just the lamb the slaughtered lamb 
slaughtered lamb can handle this and he can handle it in us folks that's that is just pretty much the story behind the book of revelation the true meaning it's that that's what pretty much jeremiah is about it's that that's what isaiah is pretty much about it's that that's what you know daniel and, and and you just keep going in the bible it's that it's that it's that hmm. okay so let's let's finish these horsemen because <clears throat> my favorite one hadn't showed up yet <clears throat> And um, verse 5, And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And, be, and I beheld and uh, saw a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So this is dealing with food, and this was a this was a real issue uh, during uh, the latter parts, as it were, if you will, of um, the well. It, it pertained to both the Assyrian and the Babylonian captivity. And Jerusalem being surrounded, and they can't get food in, and they're you know they're like starving, and they need food, and you know we need food, please, you know please, you know uh, King of Assyria, is there like a, uh, you know, a number or something you could give me, you know, in my forehead or hand where I can get food, or King of you know Nebuchadnezzar, King, we gotta have food because you're not feeding on the lamb. Um, and and so that's go, that's always an issue. That's always an issue in these kind of things. Is that you know because they're you're surrounded now, and and you know the only reason why maybe y'all don't know this, maybe you do, maybe you know it better than I do. The only reason it ever got to that point was because they wouldn't listen to Jeremiah or Isaiah or any of the prophets and just submit in the spirit of the Lamb to Nebuchadnezzar or Assyria. And because they wouldn't, they fought and fought and fought and they used all their their resources to um, keep him away. And finally, both kings just said, we're going to go down there and we're going to surround your city and we're going to put a siege against you and we're not going to let anybody in or out and no food in or out and you're going to be eating your own babies and stuff like that because which did happen by the way if you're not familiar with the bible <clears throat> which did happen and uh it got that drastic but still you know you know in the book of revelation too you know they cry for the mountains to fall on us because they that because they blaspheme God and they won't turn you know <clears throat> anyway so um, verse 7 and when he opened when he had opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse I hope I didn't skip one of these horsemen but if I did it's there I looked and behold a pale horse <coughs> I looked and behold a pale horse and his name see no names were given to the horseman just identifying the horse color and the name <clears throat> his name that sat on him was death the name of the one that sat on this pale horse was death and hell followed after okay and followed him 
And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had, which I <clears throat> we all sort of understand slain for the word of God. But not tonight, but I want to, I want to explain this testimony thing sometime because it's so big in the book of Revelation too. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we were uh, comparing uh, in Isaiah 8, uh, not verse 9, which I didn't read tonight, up to 19, we went through, Associate yourself, all you people, and you'll be broken in pieces. Gird yourself, and you shall be broken. <clears throat> uh, you know, any attempt to fight back, uh, if you're going to prepare to fight, don't do it. Uh, take counsel together. Don't start talking about getting ideas because uh, it's going to come to naught. Speak, uh, um, and then uh, it shall not stand uh, for God is with us. <laughs> well, that's, that's amazing. This is in Isaiah, and the same, th same thing was being said by Jeremiah to Judah with the Babylonian captivity. But basically the idea was, look, don't, do, don't come up with all your plans and resources and how you're going to deal with this and how you're going to overcome that and how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a helper in here and they're going to help me and we'll be stronger and we'll be able to do this or, you know, uh, help me get on my feet, not in the Lord. Well, let me just say, not in the Lamb, but, you know, um, to bless, to strengthen our spirit that it flies. Instead of strengthen me to go into that cross by the nature of the Lamb and by the heart of God that wants that spirit revealed in us and to bring that forth to the glory of God no matter what happens. And that's, that's, that's what God wants. So, so what we did was, <clears throat> when we got into all this, you, you know this, I'm just reminding you in case some of you have not been following this too well, with these teachings, with all anything I teach, you pretty much have to follow, which is tough. But that's uh, uh, what we what we did was we decided <clears throat> we got together and decided that we were going to look at New Testament scriptures that matched up with Jeremiah, matched up with Isaiah, matched up with the Book of Revelation matched up with those who have studied Esther, matched up this spirit. Um, and it's not just an Old Testament thing to see it. And so we went through, <clears throat> we started going through, um, we started with a bunch in First Peter. And, um, <clears throat> and we saw, anyway, in the New Testament, scriptures that were literally saying this same thing and like first peter was literally a book that is primarily dedicated to this thing and uh we got down to uh we were going to get into uh looking at second corinthians 12 or 6 through 10 and uh, we were going to c compare that, I think, with the scripture in First Peter also, but mainly. <clears throat> so if you will, turn with me now. Second Corinthians 12, verse 6 and 10. <clears throat> All right. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth me. All right. So he's already, he's already been dealt with what we're about to read. <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell he's already. Because he was having a problem with pride. 
and self-exaltation and that sort of thing. And um, so now he's talking like, <clears throat> you know, I, I have a desire to glory. Did you see that? Though I would desire to glory, <clears throat> I ain't even going to. <laughs> this is Paul. I shall not be a fool. All right. So this is um, congruent with um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I think it's chapter 3 or 4 <clears throat> where he jumps back into it, where he calls... He calls being a fool <clears throat> is either looking to God to get you out of things by signs, wonders. The Jews seek after, after signs. Uh, the Greeks seek, seek after wisdom. Try to figure out, you know, how to get out of the sufferings of Christ. <clears throat> how, to, how to get God to save you from being in the image of Christ. Um, and... Um, uh, and, and he calls that being a fool, and he does in First Corinthians too. And last, like I said, a few chapters in, <clears throat> um, he, he calls that being he, he calls that kind of thinking being a fool. It's foolishness because the wisdom of God and the power of God is Christ crucified. <clears throat> um, so. Uh, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be and that he heareth me to be. Meaning, <clears throat> you know, I, this is, this is kind of my take on what he's saying. You know, I spent a lot of years, you know, trying to, you know, be something and, and wanting people to think of me more highly, you know, just more highly, just, you know, da, 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 da. Uh, <clears throat> but now he adds, than they ought. <laughs> you know, it's, it's great, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> uh, think of me above that which he seeth me to be, okay? <clears throat> and, um, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Okay, so <clears throat> God's going to do this. Because when it says there was given to him, God did that. Because, <clears throat> um, but God did that because he was becoming puffed up. He was becoming self-exalting. He was thinking himself more highly than he ought. He was... Um, viewing himself as super spiritual. Well, you know, I mean, my God, we read the New Testament and the things that he says is incredible, but it's he's just the channel of it. He's just the messenger boy. And so am I and so are you. Um, it's This isn't, you know, this isn't my wisdom. This isn't my seeing. I don't see. I am a blind man all the time. I am always a blind man. God opens my eyes to see, but not not opens my eyes to make me no longer a blind man, but opens my eyes to see Jesus in this these scriptures or whatever. <clears throat> and then I go back to being a blind man. I don't I don't keep adding it up and every time I see something I go, Wow, I'm really special and I know deep stuff and I can I can share all kinds of stuff with you if you'd like to hear it. <clears throat> Instead it's like you know, I don't see. If God doesn't open my eyes at any point in the scriptures, I miss it and I'll pervert it. I'll make it about me or I'll make it about some dumb subject that really is not in God's heart. <clears throat> so, um, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. So, you would think, okay, you would think that um, if you're seeing Jesus a whole lot in the scriptures and you're not seeing it by your eyes, but God's opening your eyes, <clears throat> that um, you wouldn't get puffed up. 
But if you have not fully settled it in your heart by the fact that you're dead at the cross and Christ is your life, then you'll, you'll let even the blessing of God revealing his son in you, and I, and I will, I'm not just pointing this out to you, uh, and I know, I know this, I know, I know this, through the hard way, you will apply it to yourself, and you will think that you're special to God in that sense, and you will think, and you'll, and it'll feed stuff in you that is more beast than slaughtered lamb. Because try feeding that to the slaughtered lamb, and he just gives glory to the Father. Try feeding that to the Holy Spirit, and he says, I won't speak of myself. I don't even want to talk about it. You know, you say, well, you're very humble. No, I don't even talk about myself. Ever? No. I, you know, I talk about Jesus. I'm here to talk about Jesus. Well, we just had a big Holy Ghost, you know, hoot nanny. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we were all shouting and running around going, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And he's going, would you just, that's fine. That's great. I'm glad you feel good. But tomorrow, you won't feel it the way you do right now. Could you just focus on Jesus? Could you just do? And Jesus would go, the words I speak are not my own, they're my Father's. The, the works I do are not my own, they're the Father's. He doeth the works. Um, just, you know, I, he doesn't go to heaven, I go to the Father. I mean, all the, always just a heart. You know, then you talk to the Father and he says, well, we decided that all um, uh, fullness should rest in Jesus. And Jesus is going, don't give it to me, I'm giving it back to you. And because they just love, they love one another, and they love with agape love, not human love that will turn on you at a moment's notice if you say something wrong or or if they think you're attacking their beast as if it were not Jesus. You know, lots of beasts in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> lots of beasts in, in the people of God. God wants this spirit in us. Okay, so, um, uh, <clears throat> lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Paul, you just repeated that twice. That's not good grammar. Paul would go, I don't, I've got it there like that because I don't want to be exalted above measure. I want you to get this. You know, I'm writing it to you. I'm telling you. This is, and this is why, you know, you saw poor Paul, what he's going through. You know, some that's some people. You know, poor Paul, what he's going through, you know. Um, you know, let's pray for him. Let's go minister to him. You know, Paul, don't be down about yourself, you know. Uh, you're a great man. <laughs> you're really of God. <laughs> you really are. And we're just, you know, we're, we're still highly impressed. And he's going, please... Shut up. Don't say this stuff. It is so the opposite of what the Lord is trying to do in me. Just go away. But then you have the other people who don't go to him. They go to everybody else and go, well, Paul's going through this. and got, You know, he's got demons. <laughs> he's got demons, you know, not just demons, Satan or at least Satan's messenger. Yeah, no, uh, I got discerning of spirits. And I can tell you that, that that's Satan's messenger. You know? And uh, sound like Texan talking there. That's Satan's messenger. That's Beel's above Anyway. Uh, and so, um, 
So he's just repeating this because it, when you're in that place, it's more important than anything that you don't hear a bunch of encouragement about you, but that you someone feeds you on lamb and says, that's, yes, get lower. Let Christ be more in you. Decrease. Lest I should be exalted above measure. You said it twice. We got it, buddy. You know, I think you're pushing this lowliness thing a little too much. <laughs> well, God didn't think he was pushing it too much. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Verse 8, And for this thing I besought the Lord three times, thrice, that it might depart from me, which is... This is his, um, his, uh, you know, charismatic face. Lord, I rebuke you, devil. You know, I'm with you, Lord. Um, and, you know, it's like um, Paul is thinking, you know, Anytime I really, I, because he's a scripture searcher and was a Pharisee and he knew the scriptures. Anytime I search the scriptures and I see something that, that I sense that you're there and I say, Lord, open my eyes and my heart. I'm blind. I'm weak. I'm, I am not even worthy. But I love you and I long after that spirit in me your life and the holy spirit goes ring because you you know <laughs> your really heart you that's your heart was right not your words your heart was right not your words so the holy spirit goes bring to paul so then he goes and he goes man the devil's attacking me i need to lord take this away I'll check back with you later. So he checks back. Lord, take this away. Still got it. Does it another time. Lord, take this away. He goes, you know, when I asked that I could see Jesus, the Spirit of God just comes and he just opens the book. And what is this? There must be, I must be doing something wrong. There must be something wrong on my side. I, don't, I can't believe it. You know, I know God, and I, I think there must be something wrong on my side. So, um, <clears throat> three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Okay. <clears throat> so, it's like, you know, the Lord, the Lord says that sentence to us, and we go, uh, yes, I know your grace is sufficient, and I'm asking for it right now. To remove the devil because your grace is sufficient and your grace is about you know because we always say that we says well you know this thing happened and it's just the grace of god what well, we're talking about good stuff you know we don't go oh praise god the lord sent the devil to me and that's just the grace of god <laughs> do we i mean let's be honest we go no or somebody else you know oh well, they got a demon messing with them you know that ain't the grace of God. I got the grace of God. I'm the one that has the life of Christ. I'm the one that's spiritual. They're the one that are really messed up. Well, just doing that, you're just lucky God didn't send you Satan himself because <laughs> you're so puffed up and exalted. So, um, uh and we never hear the last part of that. My strength is made perfect in weakness. You know? I mean, I know I know a ton of people that believe that his strength is made perfect in weakness. A ton of people. A bunch of people. But I don't know too many of them that really, when they get down, they say, this is God. This is good. I need this. When things start going wrong or whatever, they say, praise God, man. The weakness, this weakness is, is going to bring glory to God in new ways. Um, they would never think, they would think that maybe in one circumstance over here, but it's not a general principle 
It's not a general mindset. It's not how they, and this is better said, it's not how they know God, that this is God. Not some incident that I go through and I'm, I'm going to be that way now in this. But then the next time something comes, like, why are you kidding me? What is this? The beast's all rising. Yeah, we're in charge and we're together. And woohoo, yeah. And they're, he's giving us full permission to, to, you know, vomit on everybody. <clears throat> Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. That the, why? This isn't just going around going, well, God just wants me to be sick. God wants me to be, you know, no, he didn't want that. Um, as long, you know, I can see God talking to Paul. As long, Brother Paul, is God speaking to you. As long as you are going to keep exalting yourself over me revealing my son and opening my heart and my word to you, and you end up keep exalting yourself, you're going to, you're going to stay with that, that messenger of Satan. And he'll have a message for, for you every day and you'll either listen to that message or you'll get you'll listen to me that my strength is made perfect in weakness okay um so paul's i'm on i'm on board <laughs> you know he's like i'm i'm with you lord you know i don't want to fool around i'd like for this to become my understanding of my god but this is the God I serve. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses, distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Oh, my God. There's a transfer. There's a partaking. There is, the, there is God saying, my grace is sufficient for you for my, you know, my strength is made perfect in weakness. This is God speaking to a man who has a messenger of Satan attacking him in some manner and doesn't know why God isn't answering his prayer. And he hears God's word and he says, not just that my grace is sufficient, but my strength is made perfect in weakness. And he hears it and he wants to he wants it to be alive in him, working, churning inside of him. And so it's, he ends that little thing in verse 10 with this verse for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. He quoted God. He quoted God. And he didn't just quote, folks. We quote. <laughs> We're good quoters. He quoted. He, he, he agreed with that as his God. And he declared it forth gladly and joyfully and said, look, anytime this stuff comes on me, I am with you. Because why? Because you're going you're gonna to eventually exalt me uh, so much that all these bad things that happen to me will just dispel and every, every enemy will just fall down and worship me or something. No, because... I'm doing this for Christ's sake. So it says, for Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then am I strong. I'm doing this for you, Jesus. I'm doing this so you can live in me. I'm doing this because you're the life. I want you to be the life. I want this to be my version of my God. I want this to be my version of God. All right. Well, we've been, you know, indoctrinated for so many years where this isn't even heard, but it's still the Word of God. Still the Word of God. All right. So now we're going to get into 1 Peter 5. Not really. We've already run out of time. But we want to compare that with 1 Peter 5. So I know what you did when I asked you last week. I asked you to kind of look over 2 Corinthians 12, 6 through 10, which we did tonight. And so now I'm going to ask you, if you will, look into 1 Peter 5, verse 6 through 11. And, uh, and I want you 
to now on your own to consider um, 1 Corinthians 12 and the things that we've, we've discussed there. I want you to consider them in light of God sending Assyria or God sending Babylon and what his purpose would be and to see that it's the same God with the same working, with the same purpose behind it, that he might get us in that image, in the image of the slaughtered lamb. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we gloriously thank you for reaching out to us always, for for never letting us settle, for even when we start to drift, drift into other areas that that pet our flesh or nurture our self-life. You will always come back and try to bring us to you, not just to a message, not just to Randy's message or somebody else's. But bring us to you. You will always do that. Uh, until we just reject you and, and choose another mind. But Father, we are they that have set our hearts to, to do what Paul did when he heard you speak, even if it was so foreign to what he'd ever thought before. He said, that's, that's how I think now. That's what I speak. That's going to be my, my purpose and my way. I, I'm adopting it right now. And Father, I just ask your spirit for those that have not fully adopted it right now. That you continue to pour, pour, not, not teach or, 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 but pour out the oil and the wine upon us to let us understand that this, this rejected place, this place of infirmity can be the most glorious joining with you that we could ever have on this earth and it could bring forth fruit and blessing beyond this life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, see, I, I talk so much that I didn't even get a drink. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on. Thank you for listening. Thank you for caring about Jesus in this way. Love you.